invites you to relive again the story of another real-life crime fighter on Gangbusters. That's tomorrow night at the same time on KRLD. The News Authority, KRLD, Dallas. Major fires at this hour, one near downtown Grand. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents. Come in. Welcome. I meet you, Marshal. Welcome to the fear you can hear. Welcome to the world of your own terrifying imagination. All of us daydream. It seems a harmless enough way of passing the time. But what might we do if some of the things that pass through our minds come true? Supposing the man or the woman we created in the mind's eye became reality. The phantom became flesh and blood. Our puzzling, nerve-tingling tale begins as it ends, with sudden, irrevocable death. Hello? Isabel, it's Sky. Sky, I've been worried sick. Where have you been? Where are you? At the apartment. I've been calling and calling. The phone must be out of order. I took it off the hook. Are you with her again? There isn't any her anymore. Deirdre's dead. Whoever she was. Whatever she was. What do you mean? She was a witch, Isabel. There was no other way. I had to kill her. You what? Oh, Scar. Honey. Uh, honey, there's a letter on the desk. I've tried to explain. And there are letters for the kids. Forgive me. No, Sky! Sky, don't hang up! Sky! Oh, good Lord! Oh, no! Our mystery drama, Out of Focus, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars William Redfield. It is sponsored in part by new sugar-free diet 7-Up and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Hi, I'm Goldilocks, Ms. Goldilocks, if you please, and I'm a professional taste tester here at my taste test laboratory. That's TTL for short. <laughs> I taste test everything from porridge to diet drinks. Actually, there's not that much taste testing in porridge these days. There used to be once upon a time. I mean, that's how this Miz got into the biz. <laughs> but lately, it's been diet drinks. I mean, with so many diet drinks going sugar-free, I've been really busy conducting taste tests. A rather unbearable assignment, to be sure. But then I discovered sugar-free diet 7-Up. Fresh, natural, delicious. My only problem is that sugar-free diet 7-Up tastes so good that it broke my Goldilocks diet drink taste meter Well, sugar-free diet 7-Up certainly has my seal of approval. This one's just right. When you're in Los Angeles, stay at the dazzling new Los Angeles Marriott Hotel. Because no matter where you travel, a Marriott Hotel always means a marvelous time. And the exciting new Los Angeles Marriott is exactly what we're talking about. With seven superb restaurants and lounges, a sensational swim-up bar in our big, beautiful pool. And the new Los Angeles Marriott is only minutes away from L.A. International Airport. A great location, the center of everything in Southern California. The life as it should be. Ask the toll.
toll-free information operator for Marriott's nationwide 800 number. Skyler Harris, Sky to your friends, a typical commuter, an account executive at Lorne Peabody and Davis, married 18 years, two children, Gary 16 and Lisa 12, 35,000 a year and an expense account. You live up to every penny. You are bored at home, driven at the office, given to fantasizing about women because you don't have the courage to take a mistress. But you are to find one, and such a one, who will quite literally be the death of you. What do you got here, Jack? It's a DOA, Sam. Cold turkey. Mm-hmm. It's like the woman on the phone said. Where's the other? The dame? Yeah. Search me, not in here. It's probably the bedroom. Check out the rest of the apartment, huh? There's a letter or a confession or something on the desk. Yeah, I see it. Dear Isabel, I have just killed Deirdre. And before I kill myself, I want to explain, or try to explain why. It started ten days ago. It doesn't seem possible that in so short a time my whole life was ripped to shreds. It was such an ordinary day, climbing aboard the old 737, just like thousands Why make fourth this morning, Sky, if Ed isn't on? Oh, no thanks, Charlie, I'm bushed. I'm going to catch a nap on the way in. Hey, you do look a little frazzled. Everything okay? Oh, <laughs> well, my health's all right, as far as I know. Oh, it's just the rat race, I guess. It's getting to me. Maybe it's a male change of life, Sky. No, 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 not yet. Please, God. Oh, Lord, that I could do with a little change of life, you know? Oh. Well, oh. leave you to get on with it. At least you got the whole seat to yourself in case the action gets rough. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sweet dreams, lover boy. Oh, go trump your partner's ace. All tickets, please. <sighs> Have your tickets ready, please. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Oh, hi, Benji. Hang on to it. It's the last ride left on the ticket. Tough night, Mr. Harris? Oh, oh, they're all tough these days, Benji. I'll see you at the end of the line, okay? Mm. Mm. You don't mind my joining, me? Oh, 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 I beg your pardon. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought I was alone in the seat. You don't mind, do you? Mind? Uh, what man in his right mind would? Uh, I'm glad you find me pleasing. I... Uh, what? Don't look so surprised. I'm just what you've been waiting for. Am I not? Mr. Harris? Wake up, Mr. Harris. We're in the terminal. Huh? What is... Well, uh, Benji, what is it? Everyone out, sir. End of the line. But I, I was just... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I... I fell asleep? Oh, what happened to the girl that was sitting beside me? What girl, Mr. Harris? Well, Benji, she was sort of a tall, dark-haired, deep, violet, black eyes like Elizabeth Taylor, long legs that... Well, I mean, if you saw her, you couldn't ever forget her. Sorry, sir. I passed you a couple of times, and the seat beside you was always empty. What? Oh, Benji, come on. You're sure there wasn't a girl? I didn't see her. Maybe you dreamed her. Maybe... Well, there's no doubt about it. She was a perfect dream. Yes, Doris? Harry? Oh, sure. Send him right in. Sky, have I got news for you? Hold on to your hat. What? <laughs> I just came from a session with the kingpin. Oh, so what does boss man Peabody have up his sleeve this morning? The brass ring for you, Sky, and I go along for the ride. The Bianchi account. Bianchi? It's all yours, baby. All you have to do is come up with a campaign. That's ten million in billing. 
biggest Newark out in the shop. The plum. Yeah. Now, if you pull it off, it's the VP rating we're all bucking for. Yeah, and if I blow it, I'll be on the unemployment line. No, 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 no. Not you, Sky. That's why the kingpin picture. Now, you better go right on up. <laughs> he wants to see you to kick a couple of ideas around. Ah, uh, you know something, Harry? What? You either cured my headache or arranged I'll never have one again. Uh, what does that mean? The Bianchi account. If I don't cut it, I won't have to worry about headaches anymore. Old Kingpin Peabody will hand me my head in a basket. Hey, Mario. Hey, yes, Miss Alice. Uh, once again, not too lightly for Mr. Lipscomb and me, okay? Right. You don't want to miss your train, Sky. Oh, you don't know how often I want to, but not tonight. <sighs> What's the big deal tonight? You and Isabel socializing? No, 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 no. For once, it's the train I'm interested in. Oh, well, that's a switch. Yeah, oh, thanks, Mario. Well, what's so special about tonight's commute? I won't know until I prowl all the trains. I'll be looking for something. Uh, do me a favor, Sky. Now, I'm only a poor working photo stiff. And you're the idea man. Look for an idea for Bianchi. But I already have it. Genius. Why? Could you picture a girl like this? Great violet gentian eyes framed with black lashes, natural at least a half inch long. Cream white skin, full lips, deep carmine to match the cheek blush. A mass of blue-black hair to frame the face. A figure full but gorgeously shaped. Long tapering legs with ankles that lead to high arched feet. Picture her in semi-decolletage, a hint of cleavage and the promise of all sex. And underneath... That caption, Bianchi. If you have it, you don't need anything else. And if you don't have it, it doesn't much matter what else you have. Now all we got to do is find the bay. Harry, Harry, I already found her. The trick is just how I find her again. Oh, oh holy cow, I got to make the first train. I, uh, uh, put this tab on the national debt, Mario. Right. Harry, you can pop for the tip, will you? I got a date with an angel. I hope... I can help you with, Mr. Harris? Huh? Oh, no, uh, no, Benji. I, I was just looking for someone. Yeah, I uh, figured. You've been from one end of the train to the other. Anyone I know? No, 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 just, uh, just a girl. The one you asked me about on the way in this morning. Yes, yes, I've got to find her. Well, if she's anything like you described, I uh, wouldn't blame you. Uh, you know, Benji, you better find me a seat now. I'm still a little stoned. Well, take my spot, Mr. Harris. I'll put my work case up on the rack. Oh, thanks. I'll stretch out. Make yourself comfortable. I'll wake you before you get to your stuff. Oh, you're a scholar, a gentleman, and a fine conductor, Benjamin. Wake up, Skyler. Huh? It isn't very flattering to have you always falling asleep on me. What's that? Oh. Oh, you're real. This time I've been waiting for you. But I hunted the whole train for you. Did you? You shouldn't have worried, Skyler. I wasn't going to let you get away. How do you know my name? If I want information, I just ask questions. Skyler Harris. Well, how do I do with the same question? <laughs> The name is Deirdre. Mm, lovely, provoking, sensuous, uh, a little incomplete, perhaps. No surname? Do you really care? Well, it would be necessary eventually just to satisfy the accountants, you know? Social Security and Uncle Sam. Dear me, does everyone have to know all about us? <laughs> well, maybe I didn't make it clear. See, I have a proposition to make to you. <laughs> oh, yes, I thought perhaps you might. Uh, no, 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 don't misunderstand me. See, I'm an advertising executive. I guess with a... I know all about you, Skyler. No, I mean there's this account. Bianchi Cosmetics. Oh, yes. Deirdre, uh, uh, I guess I may call you that. Uh, I want you to. Oh, uh, I, I have no idea who you are or what you are, but would you be interested you, in this... Skyler. No, look, honestly, I mean, this is strictly a business arrangement. 
I have a campaign in mind using you as the central figure. I don't know what you want to call it, Skylar, but as far as we're concerned, there needn't be any embarrassment or cover-ups. Don't we both know what we really want? No, no, come on, Deirdre. Don't put me on. I'm not. You're the one who turned me on, Skylar. Now look, Deirdre, and whatever your other name is, I am honest to God leveling about this big ad campaign and how perfect you are for it and how much money you could make if it all goes the way I think it could. If you insist, Skylar, anything. But if we have to talk about something other than ourselves, would you mind getting me a drink? Oh, sure, sure. I, I could use one myself. Uh, what'll it be? It doesn't matter. You pick it. Just hurry back. Oh, don't worry. Just don't vanish. Westfield. Next stop, Westfield. Hey, Mr. Harris. Mm -hmm. Coming into Westfield? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm with you, Benji. I'm with you. Thanks. Westfield is the next stop. Westfield. Uh, uh, Benji. Uh, yes, Mr. Harris. What happened to the girl? We back at that again. Oh, no, now, come on, Benji. This time it's no dream. I've been talking to her all the way up the line. What do you want me to say, Mr. Harris? Well, I want to know where the girl went. Mr. Harris, we've been riding this line a long time together. Uh, you don't want to make no scene. Benji, all I'm asking you I is what... I get the message. So what do you want me to say? If there was this girl, maybe she got off at the last stop or the one before. But she couldn't have. Mr. Harris, you've been cold turkey the last ten miles. Now, maybe this girl was here, I don't know, or maybe you just had one too many. Excuse me, we're coming into the station. This is where you get off. <laughs> A man who doesn't realize how near the end of his emotional rope he is. A girl named Deirdre who promises desire as sensually as a centerfold in today's magazines. A suburban family who awaits the return of the husband and father as routine. And the disaster we know is to happen. We'll start to fit the pieces of the jigsaw together when I return shortly with Act Two. Ever see a beer drinker pour his beer real easy down the side of the glass? Maybe you do it yourself. If so, the Budweiser brewmaster thinks you're missing something, especially if you're a Budweiser drinker. You see, Bud is brewed, so it will kick up a healthy head of foam. Exclusive beechwood aging and natural carbonation make it a lively brew. Well, anyway, pouring Bud plunk down the middle of the glass helps bring out the best in that clean white Budweiser foam and real beer aroma. It also helps you get the full benefit of a taste, smoothness, and drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Remember, brewing beer right does make a difference. Next time, pour that Budweiser right down the middle and see for yourself. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. When occasional heartburn or acid indigestion is combined with a gassy, foolish feeling, that's what we call gassed indigestion. Digel is made for gassed indigestion because Digel is different. It does more than plain add acids. Digel reduces excess acid while its patented cymethicone gets rid of trapped gas fast. Use only as directed. Digel for gassed indigestion. No plain add acid can do what Digel can. Of all the leading laxatives, only one, Phenomint, is a gentle chewing gum laxative. And for a very good reason. It's pleasant to take. Phenomint goes into your system gradually, little by little. And after Phenomint has entered your system, it begins to work gently, predictably, to relieve occasional irregularity. Phenomint, the gentle chewing gum laxative. Like all medicines, take only as directed. One of the minor sad comedies of the world, 
is the faces of the wives as they meet their returning commuter husbands. As the trains get later and later, the faces get tenser and tenser. Till finally, as the last commuter train pulls in, and errant hubby pours himself off, the wife's eyes roll helplessly heavenwards. Hi, Isabel, baby. How was your day? My day was miserable, and most of my night was worse. Really? Well, what do you mean, night? Well, it's just about half over. Do you know you're well over two hours late? This is the fourth train I've met. The least you might have done is call. Well, honey, look, I'm sorry. It was a big day at the office. I was swamped, and on top of that... Oh, don't give me that, Sky. When you weren't on the early train, I called the office, and they told me you left in plenty of time to catch it. Well, that's right. That's right. I know. I did. But look, it's big news, hon. I got handed the plum of my career today. The Bianchi account. So... Is that any reason to go out and get stoned? Oh, have a heart, Isabel. I handle this right. I'll end up a VP. Well, I'll... you handle it the way you started off, and you're going to end up PNG at home. Well, now, what does that mean? Persona non grata. Somebody not wanted. No, no, no. I know what persona non grata means. Well, what do you mean about me not being wanted? Well, you've already got two out of three of us feeling that way right at the moment. Okay. You and who else? Gary. Obviously, you've forgotten you promised to be home early while there was still enough light to give him a driving lesson. Oh, so that's such a big deal. Everybody has to snap their corks. I mean... It is when the driving lesson was to be on the way to the basketball team's father and son dinner, which you promised to attend with him. Oh, damn, Isabel. I, I, I forgot. You see, I, I was so up to my ears you that it just... You couldn't have been so far up. You couldn't put a phone to one of them and let us know. Well, I told you, Isabel, I forgot. Now, you're not going to tell me that you also forgot you have a wife who meets you at the station. Six nights a week these days. Well, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I mean, honest to Pete, Isabel, I've had a lousy day. I, I, oh, I, oh, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Isabel. So am I, Sky. About you, I mean. It's just. Just what? Sky. I've been worried about you lately. I guess I'm tense because you're tense. So who's tense? Come off it. I'm not the only one who's noticed it. Even Liza's worried about you. Oh, now what have I done to her? It isn't so much what you've done as what you haven't. You've been neglecting a daughter who needs her father very much. Why? She's 12 years old. You're a big man in her life. Okay, Isabel, okay, can we knock it off for now? I just don't want to go into the house bickering. Neither do I, Skye. Especially not in front of the kids. Okay. Truths, huh? And before we go in, apology? Accept it. Oh, I guess I have been off my feet, honey. It's overwork, you know? Well, I hope that's all. What else? Well, it's silly of me, I suppose, but it isn't another woman, is it, Skye? Oh. Of course not, Isabel. Now, now, come on. Let's get inside. I need a drink. Chrysler Model Agency? Yeah, this is Skylar Harris here. Put me through to Irene. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I'll hold. Uh, Doris, while I'm on one, call IFW and hold them on two. I want to talk to Ed Rashby, okay? Hello, Irene. It's Sky. It's Sky. Yeah, 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 fine. Well, I'm looking for a girl. First name, Deirdre. I don't know the second. She is a natural for the Bianchi account, and I've just got to find her. Well, Harry, it's hard to believe anyone this beautiful can't be a model or, or in TV or the theater or somewhere. No, 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 I'm the only one that's seen her. Yeah, yeah, I've checked out all the talent books, and I have every agency in the business pulling pictures of their clients. Well, you're last on the line, Harry, only because I couldn't get through to you sooner. Are those the uh, Maurice Williams picks, Harry? Yeah, I just came by special messenger. No luck yet? Nope, not yet. Okay, let me see him. Ah, here, now, now, just look at all these things. And now, any one of them, I can make something out of this world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, why this special one? Huh? Because she is out of this world to start with. Well, then I gotta see. Now, now, what's she got that this little number hasn't got? 
Well, you'd have to see Deirdre to understand. Well, it's a name for you. That's right. It suits her. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm almost through these. Well, suppose you don't find her. I've got to find her. Well, look, it's been nearly a week, Sky. Uh, the kingpin is getting restless. Huh? What? I said Mr. Peabody's hollering for some layouts. At least the kind of campaign you're planning... Oh. Didn't find her, huh? No. Well, maybe she's not a model. Maybe. I've still got to find her. You don't even know she exists. Now, don't be silly, Harry. She couldn't just vanish into thin air. Sky. What? Sky, uh... Look, I, 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 I just don't want you to take this wrong. Now, come on, come on, Harry. Get it out. <sighs> okay. Now, you've been running off the, the tracks quite a bit for the last few months. Now, you don't look so hot. You've been no ball of fire around the shop. Now, you've been hitting the sauce pretty heavy, and now this screwball bit about this Deirdre dame. Now, I, I think you, you ought to have a little skull session with your local friendly shrink. I got two words for you, Harry. Butt out. Okay, only only friendly advice. I don't need it. On second thought, I'll butt out. I need a drink and some space to think. Hey, Mario. Hey, yes, sir, Mr. Harris. Uh, build me another Manhattan, huh? Coming right up. Good. Boy, shoot deer in here today. Uh, it's a breather. The late lunch is blue finally, and the other drinkers don't come in for the next hour or so. Oh, I see. Sure you want to be alone, Sky? <gasps> Deirdre. Mind if I sit on the stool next to you? Mine? Oh, I've been going out of my mind trying to find you. Where do you keep disappearing to? I'm a very private person, Sky. With me, too, is more than enough company. I hate crowds. Well, this time, I'm not letting you go. How about a drink? Well, does it have to be here? No. No, name the place. How about yours? Mine? Oh, you mean the office? No, I don't like offices either. Well, I uh, have a studio apartment. Well, then can't we go there? Well, we sure can. Just let me settle my tab. Uh, Mario! Ah, uh, uh, now, where did he go? If you mean the bartender, I heard a phone ring. I think he went to answer it around the corner there. But don't you move now. We'll go right away. How far are we going, Sky? Hmm? Oh, oh, you mean the address. 825 East 50th. I'll be right back. Hey, Mario. I was uh, just coming to get you. It's your office. Well, I can't talk to him now. Here. Well, they said it was urgent. Oh, damn. Now, look, Mario, there's a girl sitting on the stool next to where I was around the corner. Don't let her get out of here. Don't let her get away. I'll handle it, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mario. Hello? Who the... Oh, hello, Doris. When? Well, I can't call now. I'm... What did my wife say was wrong? She didn't. Well, well look, uh, call her back and tell her she can reach me at the apartment. I should be there within 10 or 15 minutes. But, yeah, I got to rush now. Oh, what now? Well, Isabel, we'll just have to... to... Mario! The girl! Why did you oh, let her... I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. When I came around, there was no one here. Oh, no. No, she can't get away again. I can't tell you what a lift I got when I found you waiting at the door. <laughs> I'm glad, Skyler. Well, what did you run out of the bar for? I told you. I don't like crowds. I almost had heart failure thinking I'd lost you again. Oh, you'll never lose me. Take my coat. Uh, oh, sure, sure. Get me a drink. What's your poison? Oh, heck. You get that. I'll mix my own poison. Hello. Sky. Why didn't you call me right back? Isabel, I was busy. At a bar? Now, honey, you know how much of our business is... Con uh, well, well, never mind that. What is it? Well, at the time, I wanted you to talk to Gary. All of a sudden, just before I called, he... He, he threw a kind of fit. Oh. I don't know how to describe it. He, he just yelled at me like he was another person. Yelled something about being tired of being a kid and ran out of the house. Look, Isabel, please, I'm very busy that now. And this is the worst, guy. While I was trying to get you, he took the car and drove off. Oh, well, unless you gassed it up, he can't get very far, and he's a pretty good driver anyway. And he doesn't have a license. Well, what do you want to do, call the police? 
He said, all right, kid, and he'll be right back. Now, Isabel, please stop worrying. And stop worrying me, will you? I have urgent business to attend to. At the apartment? Yes, at the apartment. Now, let me get on with it. Apron strings? Oh, no, my wife's just a little upset over one of the kids. I hope she's not going to keep calling back and interrupting our business. Well, there's one sure way of taking care of that. Just leave it off the hook. <laughs> Let's get away from that ugly noise. Okay. What's in here? The bedroom. Oh. This is nice. And comfy. Skylar? What, Deirdre? Aren't you coming in? Well... It'd be a little easier for me to keep my mind on business out here. Besides, you... You never mixed that drink. <laughs> I decided on headier wine. There. Now, isn't this what you really want from me? <laughs> the devil is... You'd better go see before he wakes up the whole building. Oh, I was sound asleep. All right, I, I, I won't be a second. Who is it? What is it? Open the door, Scotty. It's Harry. Well, take the chain off and let me in. Harry, what do you want? Oh. Oh, that way, huh? Well, I should have figured. Well, you better ditch her fast and get on home. Isabella's frantic. She's been trying to reach you all evening, and she finally got in touch with me. What is it? Your boy, Gary. He's had an accident with the car. It's a concussion. I don't know how bad. Now, I've got a cab waiting. If you only no, get... No, you... Harry, look. I've got to get dressed. Thanks. For nothing. Now, you make sure you get rid of that chick and get home where you belong. Okay, okay, Harry. <laughs> oh. Deirdre, I, I, I didn't know you were standing there. You heard? I know. Home. What about you? We haven't even talked about... Deirdre, I can't lose you again. I promised you you wouldn't. I'll be waiting. It doesn't matter about tonight. Not anymore now. Because you know there's always tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. So mourn Shakespeare's Macbeth for the death of his lady. How much will our lady called Deirdre mourn the death of her lover? We'll return shortly with Act Three. And now another story of the ball and chain as Kellogg's Special K presents Veronica and Jack. Oh, Jeffrey, isn't this romantic? Out in a quiet lake at night with you rowing the boat. Yes, Veronica, it's really neat. Jeffrey, what was that? Uh, frogs. Frogs that go bong? Uh, they're pretty weird frogs. Oh, Jeffrey, you're such a conner. You have a ball and chain. Like the ones they use in those special K commercials. Yes, Veronica. It symbolizes my few pounds of extra weight. But I'm going to get rid of it. How? Uh, by exercising. You know, like rowing this boat and eating smart at every meal. Starting with a special K breakfast. You mean a one-ounce bowl of high-protein Special K, four ounces of skim milk, orange juice, and coffee? Uh, precisely. It's less than 240 calories, and it tastes delicious. It'll help me get rid of this ball and chain. I'll help too, Jeff. After all, we're all in the same boat. <gasps> you have a ball and chain, too. <laughs> Your happy ending could begin with a Special K breakfast from Kellogg's. The Tab Paysetter account from Exchange Bank. An unusual name for an unusual checking account. TAB stands for Total Account Banking, and that means a complete package of 14 customer services. A pace setter is a leader in its field, which means we have the only account of its kind in town. And here's what you get with your TAB pace setter account. As many personalized checks as you need, and you get to write as many as you want. No minimum balance. 
$10,000 accidental death insurance, membership in bank club association, installment loan discounts, all the money orders and traveler's checks you want, local and national discounts, a safety deposit box, and special deals on travel tours, a quarterly bank club newsletter, and financial counseling for the asking. You get all these services for only $3 a month. The Tab Paysetter account, an unusual name for an unusual checking account. From Exchange Bank, Harry Hines at Mockingbird, member FDIC. No better introduction for what's to come but the rest of Macbeth's lament. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And then to the messenger who came, he said, Thy story, quickly. Deirdre? Skylar. Thank God you're still there. I told you you wouldn't lose me again. That's all I wanted to know. Look, I can't talk now. I'll be at the apartment as soon as I can. Will you wait? Through eternity, lover. I've got to hang up. God. What are you doing now? Oh, sorry, honey. I've uh, just got to get to the office. You're going into town today? Yeah, I have to. You see, the deadline on the Bianchi accounts day after tomorrow. I... Got my work cut out to meet it. I, I, I doubt if I can even get back tonight. Uh, perhaps he, not even tomorrow night. Well, what about Gary? Honey, I checked the hospital, and he's fine. You knew that when we left at 4 o'clock this morning. I'm still glad you checked again. I thought I heard you on the phone coming downstairs. Well, yeah, well, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I called a cab, too. I can run you to the station in my car. No, no, it's all right. It, it's better this way. Hey, uh, you want some coffee? No. My stomach's too upset. Oh, Sky, we could have lost Gary. Well, we didn't, honey, so let's not agonize over it. I don't know. Everything seems so confused. Like there was a sort of curse on us. And you worry me most of all. Me? You. You're like a stranger. Sky, why couldn't I reach you last night? What were you doing? I told you, Isabel. I had work to do. I, I didn't want to be interrupted. I, I, I took the phone off the hook, and then I, I just forgot about it. Work seems to be the only thing that matters to you nowadays. Sky, you only had two hours sleep. Do you have... Come to... on, Isabel. We haven't got time for messing around. Now, now, you see, there's my cab. Couldn't you at least take a later train? Look, my job depends on this. And you won't be home tonight. I doubt it. <laughs> Brother, I kid you not, you are in big trouble, Sky. Now, Peabody is really on the warpath. The only thing saving your neck for a day or so is that Bristol Proctor's in town. Oh, Harry, please, will you lay off me? I've got everything under control. Oh, boy, that is for laughs. Oh, now I get the whole picture. Why, you're off the rails, on the sauce, and running hot and cold flashes. <laughs> well, if you think some chick is worth what you're heading for... Come on, let me give you some advice. The only thing I want from you, Harry, is technical advice in your specialty. What? I want to take some pictures of a girl. What? Bring her into the studio here. No, 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 that's just the trouble. She won't come here, and I'm only gambling that if she'll let anyone shoot her, it'll be me. Well, you know from cameras, you're an idea man. Now, now look, do me a favor. Will you? Let's set up the copy like you suggested and let me pick the girl. Now, and listen, I've got the girl. If only you can get me a camera that's reasonably foolproof, I can get good enough stuff for the sample layouts. Then we can take it from there. Well, yeah, was that sensational? Take huh? my word for it. Well, I can give you a Miklon 35, 85-millimeter lens, a micro-blitz strobe with high-speed ectochrome film. Well, that's okay. Yeah. You name it. Just show me how to use it. Oh, well, you don't have to worry too much about the strobe, even. The film will take natural light, and I'll push it in developing. Okay, get me the camera. I'll be back with the picture in an hour. <laughs> you having fun, Skylar? Oh, Deirdre, this isn't a game. This could mean our whole future. It could indeed. Yeah, just like that, just like that. I'm glad you let me talk you into taking the pictures. You won't be sorry. I'm just 
very much afraid you will be, Skyler. Oh, damn. Sky, dear, I forgot to ask you. <clears throat> Cutting out your wife? Well, I've got to finish these pictures. I... Kidra, why did you say I'd be sorry I took them? Skyler, baby, I really don't photograph very well. You'll see. <laughs> Ah, you got the prints, Harry. That's great. Well, I don't know how great you're going to think it is. Huh? Come on, what do you mean? Well, I, I don't know what I mean. I, I, look, I just don't see how you could have gotten everything so gummed up. All right, just let me see. Sure. Help yourself. Everything's so out of focus, you can't tell a lamp from a couch. And it's for the girl. Well, <laughs> you find her. I can't. Well, I don't know. She was right. It... Well, if that's the couch, she should be... Now, wait a minute. Let me see in this one. No, this one is... Uh-uh. Oh, Harry. How could I have faked out so badly? You got me. Uh, Sky. Level? Yeah. Uh, is this some kind of a stupid put-on? I mean, uh, what are you trying to pull on me? Nothing, Harry. Honest, I shot the film at all the openings, the shutter speeds. I mean, everything that you laid out for me. It all came out like this? Yeah. Well, okay. Now we've got to figure... Uh, maybe the film is bad or the lens crystallized or something. Well, let's go back. I, I bring other equipment and this time we bring home the bacon. No, 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 Harry. She wouldn't let you shoot her. I, I can't explain, but... All right, so forget her. I can't. I can't, Harry. I've got to take one more crack at it. Just, just one more. Oh, man, you're crazy. Would you help me? You, you won't let me. Some kind of camera that I just can't fail with. Uh, well, okay. Look, I'll, uh, I'll give you an instant. Uh, 20 seconds, you'll know if you goof. You just keep adjusting it till it's right. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll go get the camera. Oh, you're an okay buddy. Thanks. Hello. Oh, thank God it's you, Sky. Isabel, what is it now? I, I'm just at the end of my rope. I could swear somebody's got a hex on him. What are you talking about? You've got to come home. Gary's back in coma. What? When did that happen? About ten this morning. I tried to reach you. Isabel, listen. You've got to cope a little longer. Everything's falling apart for me here, too. I can't get home till at the earliest later tonight. What's the matter? She won't let you go? Who? Oh, don't try to kid me. There has to be another woman. You couldn't be like this if there weren't. Okay, Skye. If this is the way you want it, you can just let us all go to hell. Isabel. The only thing I wish you is a one-way ticket there yourself. Isabel. Isabel. Oh. Okay, Skye. Here's your instant camera. Now, maybe this will get us all a clearer picture of where we're going. take care of tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Yes. That was a lot more than a promise. I don't know what you mean. Take your picture. And you'll know. What is it, Deirdre? I've got this weird feeling that's taking me over. I, uh, I'm scared. The wages of sin. Take your picture. Shoot, Sky. All right. All right, now just like that. Just just hold it. Now, while we wait for it to develop, let me tell you what you'll see. Where? On the picture. Everything sharply in focus for just a second, and then where I should be, a blank. An empty hole in space. Look. All right. Oh. Oh, Lord, no! As I really look, you've never seen a witch before, have you? No. You think I'd be a successful model for your Bianchi account? Who are you? Look at your picture again. Just what you said. You. 
Whatever it was, you, you, it's gone. But I'm still here. This is me. You won't let me go, will you, Skylar? Why me, Deirdre? A personal whim. And you were so ripe for the tempting. You'd, you'd destroy me eventually. Of course. But I could put it off for a while. You don't have me that much in your spell. Oh, are you so confident? What makes you so? You, this. What are you doing with a gun? Well, you see, it happens to be a hobby of mine. I can put five out of six in a three-quarter-inch bullseye at 30 feet. It won't save you anymore. Oh, I know that, I know. But it can the rest of my family. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> She was mortal. She was dead. Just a second ago, three hours after I shot her, I rose and touched her cheek. It was cold as the grave. I go to meet her there now, or eternal damnation. I have no hope for myself. Only for you, Isabel, and for the children. Whatever harm there is left in her, I pray can reach only me alone. I hope I've brought you protection. Goodbye forever. For I know whatever life after death there is, I can never ever share it with any of you. I sold my soul to the devil and the witch he sent to find me. How do you like that for a confession, Jake? What am I going to say, Sam? Them guys working in advertising, they're halfway round the bend. I guess you got to be a little bit screwy to get into that kind of business in the first place. Figures. Now, nah, hold it. Yeah? Oh, hi, Lieutenant. This is uh, Detective Sam Banks. Yeah. It's pretty much like the story the wife called in from Connecticut. Guy left a confession you got to read. Won't help much. I mean, it's far out. Huh? On the subject. Yeah, there's not much doubt from pictures around the apartment. This is Skylar Harris, all right. Sure, deal way. Bullet through the head. We're just waiting for the M.E. now. Hmm? Well, what do you mean, both? There's nobody else in the apartment but the guy. The dame? There's not a sign of her. Well, you'll get it when you read the confession. The way I figure it, she was one of them, uh, what do you call it, firmaments of the imagination. I don't think she ever existed. Did the detective mean to say figments of the imagination? Or was his choice of firmament, perhaps, nearer the truth. Was Deirdre more finite than he believed? Was she somebody of incarnate evil, clothed in beauty, who still stalks the day and the night, looking for other prey? I'll be back shortly. John Jones, statistic, born with cleft feet and cleft palate. Shirley Smith, statistic, Born blind. Tom Kelly, statistic. Born with an open spine. Statistic. Children born with birth defects. 250,000 of them every year. One out of every 14 babies. Small statistics with a whole life ahead of them. Small statistics who cry and think and feel and want to run. Why should life deny them good health at birth? The March of Dimes leads the fight for this life. Good health at birth. Good health at birth. 
could help you. Through medical service programs, public education, and scientific research. So that one day, the ultimate goal will be reached. The prevention of all birth defects. But birth defects are forever, unless you help Please, me. will you give to the March of Dimes? One parting word until we meet again. Be careful, commuters, and all the other men with extra time that weighs heavy on your hands. Look with a jaundiced eye at that fantasy girl who may materialize beside you in the train or the bus or on the stool next to you in your favorite bar. And before you succumb to temptation, remember, at the best, she's apt to burn a hole in your pocket. At the worst, she may burn your soul forever. Our cast included William Redfield, Joan Loring, Suzanne Grossman, Ralph Bell, Dan Ockel, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. We're going to be extra nice to Aunt Bell, Linda. Huh? After all, we're protecting an investment. You're back. I can't believe it. I... Look, I, I've had just about enough of this. You people simply have to stop coming into my apartment. I'm going to tell Charles he has to do something about this. Oh. Hello? Oh, Charles. Hello, Aunt Belle. Will you get over here and get these people out? Who, oh, Aunt Belle? That man who was here last week. And this time he has a friend. A lady friend, no less. Aunt Belle, you mean that guy is back? He certainly is, and with a strange woman. I'll be right over. Oh, please do. They're upsetting Julia terribly. I think she's afraid of them. Julia? Aunt Belle, Julia is dead. She can't be there. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. You like to find what you want without a lot of driving around and without a lot of walking. That's why you'll like Plymouth Park. It's the anything and everything place. Quality merchandise, services, dining, entertainment, you name it. It's all at Plymouth Park. We call it total shopping. You'll call it great. Find your favorite store. Everything you want and more at Plymouth Park. Just off Highway 183 on Story Road in Irving.